welcome to McFly Angler. I've never been a guide, but I still enjoy teaching people how to catch more fish. So join me in this video where I show you how I tie this fly. And I like these Risen O'Shagna sea hooks. Hopefully I said that right for this fly. Uh, this is a one aught. Place your hook securely in your vise. And for thread, I really like this Vivis 140 power thread. Start your thread leaving a small space behind the eye of the hook and bring your thread back to the bend of the hook before trimming off the tag end. Your thread should end up right about at the hook point. Okay guys, so next you're gonna need a uh, bucktail. We've got white here and red. I like this combo a lot. It gives like a different color to the head of the fly um, if you wanna do that. You can also tie it in like olive or blue or whatever color combo that you want. Uh, but I really like this red and white. You're gonna need two spots, one further down and one further up for this fly. So when getting your deer hair, you want a pretty big clump for the back of the fly here. And you want it towards the top here. Now, as you can notice, there's a lot of fur that is really short here. In order to get rid of that, you want to pinch up by the tip and then remove the bottom stuff. Measure the bucktail to about two times the hook length and trim it to size. Then with the ends of the fiber facing toward the hook eye, tie the clump down with three loose wraps, so just a small amount of the butt sticking out the back. Push down with your thumb and pinch the fibers in order to arrange them around the hook shank. This is what the front of the hook should look like. Once the fur is evenly surrounding the hook shank, then make a few tight wraps to make sure it will not spin. Empty a big pen to use the body tube as a tool to push the fur rearward. Grab the fur with your fingers, and then pull the thread up through the fur and make a thread dam in front of the fur to keep it angling rearward. If you let go of the fur too soon, it will be difficult to get it facing rearward again, so try not to do this. On this piece, you can wrap up over the fur as well to really make sure it's angling rearward. But only this piece, since this one does not need to be flared out as much. So for the flashaboo, you want quite a bit of the pearl. Probably a dozen or so strands. Just an accent. Maybe half as much. Five or six strands. So when you get it, just twirl it a little bit in your fingers to mix them up. There we go. You want to make sure the ends are tapered. These are already naturally tapered. So that's perfect. Now one thing that helps is to wet your fingers. And you can see it kind of makes those fibers stick together really well. It's easier to tie that in. Then move it around with your thumb to surround the entire hook shank. Use a pen to push all the forward fibers rearward evenly around the hook. With this fly, we're going to be using a saddle hackle, and I'm also going to be using ostrich plume. Now, instead of ostrich plume, you could use just a white saddle hackle, or you could just only go with um, the grizzly here, but I like the contrast between the white and the grizzly. So with the ostrich, we're going to need about four pieces. You can see some of these are a little shorter, so make sure you've got four longer pieces. Right there, there's three. So there's four. And just rip it off. Grab the longer pieces. Pull the other ones away that are short. There you go. Tie two of the strands on one side of the fly so they extend back to about the same as the flash of it. then tie the other two on the other side of the fly. And for the saddle, you're going to want to try to find the thinnest of the feathers that you can. You can do this by hanging it upside down and looking. Um, once you learn where they're at, you'll know right where to go. You don't have to be super long, unless you're tying a really big version of this fly. Once they're measured out, I'm going to come down just a little bit, peel off some of the fiber. Cut 
Cut with a little tag in there. Trim off some of the fibers. So that way you have a good tie in point so it doesn't pull out. Tie this hackle in position so it's sideways on the fly, but coming up over the top of the fly. Tie the second hackle in on the other side of the fly in the same manner. So for the next part, we're going to want to use something a little further down as it'll flare more. So again, pinch the tip, pull out all the under fur. Basically tie this in the same way as the last bucktail clump. However, don't tie up over it and make sure it still flares out slightly. All right, for the second bit of flash, I'm gonna use about four, three or four strands of crystal flash here. Tie in the flash on top of the hook on one side of the fly. Then pull the forward facing fibers rearward and tie them in on the other side, making a bit of a cape over the back of the fly, like so. One more flared out chunk of white bucktail. Each section of bucktail should be flared out more than the last. All right, another bit of flash will be now, tied in in the same way as last time. But this time, pull the forward facing fibers up and over the back of the fly to give more of a shimmer on top. So when cutting off the hair for the top part, you want the last part to be pretty chunky. You can see that's quite a bit of hair. So when measuring this out, you want it to be not too long. Right about there is fine. But you want to cut off a lot about right out here. You really want this to flare out and give you a little extra space. As you can see, we're tying this in the same way as the white bucktail, but with more of the butt section sticking out. This is to really make sure that the head pushes a lot of water. Now you can trim the section back by holding down the longer fibers and trimming up the tips. This will give it a more tapered transition into the white body, and it will still help keep the head of the fly bulky. Now whip finish your fly, and the fly is pretty much done. I do like to use some UV resin to cement the head of the fly before fishing it to make it more durable. Also if you run the fly under warm water a few seconds, and let it dry that way, it will help taper these fibers in a more teardrop shape. And here you can see roughly how large the fly is. Also, I wanted to let you know that I was able to work out a discount for you all at www.risenfly.com where I got the hooks I used for this fly and they also have some awesome gear at great prices, especially after my discount. So go check them out and type in McFly at checkout for your 15% off. Also, do me a favor and pick up one of my awesome shirts, hats, or stickers from my Teespring shop. Link for my merchandise and the Risen site will be in the description section of this video. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this sort of thing, please subscribe and hit that like button. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.